Amphibious tanks. Are they any good? Should you bother researching them? Better yet, is there a way of exploiting them? Hmm. Wait a second. Amphibious drive. I can add a propeller onto any tank design that I like to make it amphibious. Huh. Hey, wait a minute. I've forgotten something. I need some internet security. What could this be? Hey, what do we have here? Most transparent VPN? 30 million downloads? 10 years of VPN experience? This can mean only one thing. This video is sponsored by Private Internet Access. VPNs allow you to take on an identity of another computer from another country, another continent, another planet. No, just Earth. VPNs are great for gaming. One really annoying thing that ISPs do is they throttle your data, which can affect your pings and also affect how quick you can download and upload. A VPN can help you get over that. DDoSing is also a thing of the past. By avoiding using your local IP address, DDoS attacks are useless. Have you been banned? A VPN could help you get around that. And also, some lobbies and servers have restrictions on certain countries, so why not just slip into a game from Europe or Australia or North America? It's possible. Install it everywhere. Works on Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and that protection can be used on 10 different devices. $2.11 per month for a two-year plan plus three months free. That's a massive 82% off. The link is in the description below. Give it a click. Check it out. You have nothing to lose. Click it. Let's begin. The United States of America again. Let's go communist. Continue with the New Deal. National Guard division for everyone. Everyone go here and then exercise up. Let's grind a little bit of XP, just a tiny little bit. The holy trinity of research at the start of the game with also amphibious tanks. That's right, we're going for this. And I'm gonna show you a way to exploit this, to have an amphibious tank that has the function of an AA tank, a regular tank, and also a Marine. I don't think this is meant to be in the game. You'll see. The beauty of this build is you don't really need to produce that much. You don't need AA. You don't really need any regular old tanks. This tank is gonna do so much, you won't need to build most of the production in the game. This is so broken. Five speed. Boom. Off we go. We've continued the new deal. And now we get to suspend the persecution on ban communism, right? But first, decisions. Medium lobbying effort. And we're going to go for WPA as well. Boom. Another medium lobbying effort. We need all the support in the House and the Senate. Convincing the senators to go communist. Oof. Oof. All right. We need to fix the economy. So let's get out of that depression. The Agricultural Adjustment Act is next. Each one of these can be done, I believe, every year. And this finally gets rid of Great Depression. So let's start the ball rolling. Time for a little bit of communism. Well, the idea of communism, not actual communism, just the idea. Another medium lobbying, more lobbying, more lobbying. Can you imagine lobbying for communism in America? Can you imagine how that how would look? It'd be like fist fights in the Senate, right? Throwing chairs in the house, like real life. <laughs> Here we go. The Limited Intervention Act is now possible. Let's do it. Oh, stability loss. Oh, man, everyone hates us. But this allows us to change our economic laws so much earlier than we normally would. We can jumpstart the American economy way earlier than you should. Technically, this shouldn't be possible. But hey, here we are. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Speaking of uh, special services, yeah, why not an intelligence agency? Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, what Hoy fan doesn't want that, right? The election of 936, four more years. All right, okay, so now we've passed our Limited Intervention Act. We don't have a lot of support in the house. And then again, maybe the red represents communism. Ah, we made it. <laughs> Medium lobby in. So in the meantime, what we'll do is go reach out to the Ware Group. There exists a small group of devout communists inside our government. They believe that they can operate in secret, but we know their names. Perhaps they could see that our goals align and could be persuaded to join the government. Um, this is pretty dumb, okay? And you're about to see why. Now, these advisors are like, oh, wow, advisors, these don't gain much. They're not really a big deal. Oh, you'll see in a second why this is dumb. PDX were like, well, USA are really strong. Let's make them even stronger with a focus tree. I... I wish, I wish I was joking and making this up, but th this does actually seem like the case. Right, now we need a medium chassis. We're going to go for the 1941, so let's start with 1934. All right, we've reached out to the Ware Group. Now, this is why this is broken. Check this out. So, political advisors, usually 150 political power. Oh, this guy, 5% efficiency cap, 5%. Uh, free. Whitaker Chambers, editor, 5% EP, extra 5% stability. That's not too bad. Free. And this is just takes the biscuit. Financial expert, 5% reduction in consumer goods. Um, an, in an unbelievably great advisor. Free. Who in the comments thinks that communism doesn't work, right? <laughs> right, right? Uh, it's just a computer game, please. Only, it's only a game. 
Why do you have to be mad? Knock, knock, America, wake up. 300 PP. You know what that means? Well, first thing we're going to do is medium lobbying because uh, we don't have a lot of support in the Senate. I wonder why. Ugh. Maybe those big changes, maybe hiring communists in government, potentially. And then we do this undisturbed isolation. Look at all those penalties. And then we go civilian economy in 1937. Oh, this is so dumb. But hey, I'm not complaining. And that has now unlocked the American economy. Look at this, baby. Oh, that's so good. Next up, war propaganda. That means the Americans who are not really into war are, are being pushed into it. Wow, like real life. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. What? The amphibious tank chassis is complete. So what is this? It's, it's, it's a tank chassis that is an amphibious dedicated tank. Uh, the stats aren't very good, but it has lovely penalties into rivers and amphibious and marshes. But we're not going to be making that tank. We're going to add the amphibious drive to a dedicated tank. This isn't as effective as a dedicated chassis, but what we're about to do with it is going to be super special. Build a new missions plant in Georgia. Damn, Georgia. That makes me think back. Can you remember when the Russians invaded Georgia? <laughs> Good times. I heard on the news that Russia has invaded, but I don't see them know where what's going on. You are in the state of Georgia. The nation of Georgia is on the other side of the world. More lobbying. Hang on a minute. I've just thought of something. Maybe the Americans are onto something. Maybe you can lobby your way in or out of anything. Wow. Money really does open doors. Hello. I like money. Early mobilization. And finally, get rid of my depression. The Housing Act. A house for everyone. Engineer 2. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means we go for Disperse Industry 3. But not only does it mean that, that also means we can go for a uh, Flame Beast. There we go. The Housing Act is done. We're off Undisturbed Isolation. We have a fully blown mobilized economy. Disarm nation doesn't even matter because we've got half a million manpower at disposal on an actual decent sized army. You think they'd nerf America more, wouldn't you? Hmm? You think they'd nerf them more? Please nerf them more. They're way too strong. I don't want to hear your comments about, well, that's the way they were in real life. This is a computer game. This is not real life. Touch grass, bro. Amphibious drive. It starts. The classic question is, what's the exploit, Dave? So first of all, let's make a tank. In this case, we've got an improved medium chassis. Fantastic. Look at that monstrosity. I love it. And we'll just make a traditional tank. Here we go. Three-barreled. Proved automatic cannon. Classic feedback gaming style design. Cost effective. Something you can produce in numbers. But what if I wanted to make this an anti-air tank? So if you go into small armaments and look for the improved anti-air gun. See, it's got lots of air attack. 32. Amazing. Boom. But unfortunately, we can't save this because it can't be classed as a medium tank, but have an anti-air gun on it. So you'd have to change it from a medium tank to anti-air. But look at those penalties. We lose soft attack. We lose practically all of our breakthrough. This in the long run is not good. We want our tanks to have breakthrough and armor and soft attack because at the end of the day, that's what tanks are used for. The question is, though, how would we make a tank that has anti-air capabilities, armor and breakthrough, that basically does everything? Well, here's the glitch. You add on the amphibious drive, which makes any kind of chassis, an amphibious tank. Boom. Then we hop onto amphibious. Now you have the benefits of an amphibious tank, which has penalties for amphibious invasions, attacking rivers and marshes. You also get the benefit that it has an anti-air gun, but doesn't suffer from any penalties to its breakthrough. This is a tank that just does everything. Okay, that'll do. Start producing the water boys. At the same time, we can make an ideal division too. So we'll grab the National Guard. We'll duplicate it. We don't need AA on there, but we'll replace it with a flame tank. And then to top it off, we'll slap on an amphibious medium tank. Look at that. You've got attack bonuses for rivers and amphibious. You've got armor. You've got breakthrough. And you've got air attack. That's perfect. Now, if you wanted to add more stats on, you could do by adding on another amphibious tank, which we will do at some point. But for the time being, that'll do just great. All right. No need for any more XP. Grab a few of these and convert them over. How many can we convert? Quite a few. You. Be aware that amphibious tanks are classed as special forces. There is a limit of how many you can have based on your overall army size. In this case, we'll grab, let's say, 10 of these, convert them to the water boys, move them here. Commando dude. Yep, you will do. Move you to San Francisco. Off you go. And exercise. The Japanese have sunk one of our ships in the China Sea. You know what this means? War. The Mexicans have nationalized the oil. This can only mean one thing. War. Mexican compensation. We are on good terms. Declare war. Yeah, sure, we're on good terms. <laughs> ah, good terms.
Now we finally get to test out our amphibious tanks. Can they be pierced? Well, enough, they can. Oh, partially can we be pierced? Pushing into hills, though. It's a bit of a struggle. This is what democracy looks like. There we go. You can't pierce us now. There's me invading Mexico and Britain's like, would you like to join the allies? <laughs> Ah, uh, classic Britain. No. Well, well, well. What's happened here? Mexico has joined the allies. I'm getting whiplash from this game. Do you want me in the allies or not? All right, Mexico has collapsed. And, uh, oof, we're having problems. I'm getting War of 1812 vibes. Don't mind me, just coming through. Death Stack Navy, giving us uh, pre-Man the Guns vibes. Well... This is a mess. All right, stability on the front line has finally been achieved. I think it's due to the convoy raiding happening here. This is pretty mean. Blockade, the Canadians. We'll get them from the other side. So west and east is covered now. The east is going well, pushing straight in. AI is getting a bit confused. How many divisions do we put on this front line? I don't know. Uh, but in the Midwest and the far west, not going too well. Biggest AA is complete now, so we can finish our final tank design. V2, the medium armament. The advanced anti-air gun. 30 piercing and a massive 43 air attack. Wow. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, Canada really put up a fight. They were stronger than I expected. Well, I say Canada. Most of it's British troops. Naval invasion support here and here. And off they go. Landing with shore bombardment. Way too many divisions. They can't hold this. Rip. Midway has been retaken. Next. Wake Island. I feel like I'll regret doing this. Total mobilization. And Rosie the Riveter. Now, more civilian factories than I can't even spend. It's like two full pages of civvies. Another naval invasion. Go, go, go. Grab the islands. Big Island taken without a single bullet being fired. Marshall Islands, West Island has one division completely ripped. And the Eastern Island taken. Max out those ports. It's been so long since I've done island hopping. Usually I just jump on the mainland of Japan. This is actually kind of fun. Okay, the real prize. Marcus Island getting really close to the Japanese mainland here. Will this be easy to take? Will this be a challenge? How many divisions are here? One! And the tanks are completely tearing them apart. Oh, trying to take one of their islands back. Oh my god, completely denied. Oof. Historical significance. Iwo Jima. Will Japan defend this island? More than all the others. Is this going to be the most historical game? Will they fight for every single inch of Iwo Jima? No, it's only one division and they're getting completely annihilated. Oh dear. Oh well. Japan's made some good progress in Asia, but it looks like most of the divisions are here. Oh dear. Wow, they've actually got a really good defense. I'm impressed. That is a pretty successful landing, if I don't say myself. Now, off you go. Slice the mainland in half. Do what the Americans could never do. Who needs nukes, right? First time breaking a straight was really easy. Thank you, amphibious tanks. You do actually have a use. Oof. That's a big oof. Communist China joins the Allies. Allies declare war on China, I presume? Yep. <laughs> oh, no! This truly is the worst timeline. One tank, 1943. Can I make it amphibious though? That's the question. Amphibious drive, amphibious. This design, can I have more than zero amphibious drive modules? Okay, that's really, makes me really sad. No amphibious modern tanks. Boo. Just moving my Japanese spies to the UK. Nothing sus about this at all. You know, Japanese spies entering Britain. This is what a D-Day looks like with no Canada and no United States. Not good. Now for the true enemy of the United States. The oldest enemy of the United States. Off you go. Where could he be going? What is the enemy? Who could it be? Who is the one oldest enemy of the United States? And it's Ireland. Who would ever expected that? <sighs> Joking. It's the UK. Oh, here we go. Mass amphibious tank invasion. Oh my God. That's so beautiful. And oh my God. Look how big those models are too. Chunky boy is a big boy. Well, that was pretty easy. Go, go, go. And uh, yeah, you yeah, just go. Do they actually have any troops on the mainland? It doesn't look like it. I mean, let's be real for a second. Who would have predicted this invasion, right? Who would have seen this coming? Air support? That's right, there's some cast. But they're getting absolutely ripped out the air with the air attack. See, I told you the air attack was good, right? Oh no, bringing your troops back from wherever? Africa, maybe? Africa? No, not Africa. Definitely not Africa. From somewhere anyway. Oh no, the encirclement. Every time the helmet goes up, I get like a little drip of dopamine. UK lost 1.1 million to the United States. This is a work of art. Now I'm going to show you what a real D-Day looks like. Thinking, what's going on here? I'm like, is that the Northern Ireland flag? No. I'm like, it says it's England. And I'm like, England? Ah, England. The puppet of the United States in Ceylon. 
<laughs> Led by Winston Churchill. How did he stay in power after that disastrous defeat? Madness. All right, a proper D-Day. Oh, look at that. Now that looks good. Oh, and here too. Way more success in Brittany. Go here. Go here. Go here. Boom. Off you go. Push. Big push. A little bit of a stalemate. Back and forth. Grinding their air at the moment. They've got a massive air force. The dust has settled. They've stopped attacking me. Well, almost. And all the divisions are at full strength. Loads of supply. The final push. Oh, the divisions are just melting. And the air force is melting. Germany's an open goal. Vichy France at its knees. Kind of insane how effective this is without any air support. Well, I, a little bit of air support. I've got some old crappy planes. For the most part, the cast is getting shredded from the amphibious tanks. Pretty, pretty crazy. Damn, they're stacking divisions on Vienna. It's almost like they know that's the last big victory point they've got. I like to think the AI is smart and they're really, they've really thought about this. I don't think they have, though. I think it's just a coincidence. Germany, gone. The liberation of Warsaw. Rip. Okay, I just want all of Germany. That's all I want. Okay, that's going to be difficult. This is what democracy looks like. Just hoovering up the entire world and occupying everything. I love democracy. <laughs> but we're not done yet. Well, I've never seen this icon before. Create a faction. Request from Ecuador. They would like to form a faction with us. Why not? Go. Off you go, lads. They're barely even putting any resistance. The Balkans are doing a better job of holding than the Soviets. Man, this is the, the end. Don't ask me why, but Germany has Jamaica and it's classed as a major power. Soviets down. Just the uh, Jamaican Germans left. There we go. Easy. Classic late game peace conference. Have you got enough points? Nope. Does it actually matter because no one else can take points from you? Nope. You've still got to hit past a thousand times. Oh man, peace conferences. When are they getting a rework? That is a big United States font on Siberia. Let's not forget a few things, guys. I'm democratic, okay? And I never changed from democracy. So this is all possible as being democratic. And I've assumed control of the Ecuadorian faction. Now I'm going to kick Ecuador from their own faction that they created. There you go. That makes perfect sense, right? The Ecuadorian faction. The Ecuadorian conquerat. Conquerat. Conquer, conquer, conquer the world as United States. This game makes no sense. Don't forget to check out private internet access in the description below. Hey, you made it to the end. Now, this is the video you want.